How often should you text your girlfriend slash partner? Well, as I talk about in 3% man, if you've been dating a girl for a while and you're in a serious relationship, I mean, typically women are, their feminine energy is bonding, connecting, opening up to receive love, relationships, dating, labels, family, all of the nesting together, all of those things. And what's going to happen most of the time is if a girl, if you're six, eight weeks in and you're serious, you're typically going to be at her house at night or she's going to be at yours. She's texting you a couple times during the day or maybe calling you when she knows when you get out of your afternoon meetings or whatever it happens to be. And so in that case, there's really no reason to have to reach out to her. I mean, if, if the girl's texting, you know, my experience has always been, is the women text and call throughout the day. They always do that. And if you never call or text, you might get a, hey, how come you never call or text me? I'm always contacting you. It's like, babe, I love seeing your name pop up in the phone. And I'll come back with something funny and humorous because the reality is women like you more if they have to call and text you more. Now, if they start complaining about it, because some of them will, then maybe once a week you surprise her with a text. And then next week it might be a phone call. Another week, you might write her a little note and tape it to the visor in her car and says, I love you. I'm thinking about you. Have a great day, babe. Put it in her purse. Maybe you write her a little card. The point being is her complaining that you're not texting or reaching out is her way of saying, I want to feel like you care about me. And so you take the feedback, but you do it in your own mysterious way. So she's like, I don't know what he's going to do. She's looking, she goes home and she's looking under her pillow. She's like, where did he hide it? I know he left me a note somewhere. Or, because you do things and it's just that's part of the fun of romance and relationships. And the reality is, is when you're in a serious relationship and you're going to pretty much be together and in contact throughout the day and you're going to see each other at night. And there's it's counterproductive because what guys will notice is if they start calling and texting more and initiating more, the woman backs off and she initiates less. And then what happens is the responses get shorter. She takes longer to reply, and then when you want to get together for a date or to do something, you notice she's not as excited about it as she was before. The reality is it's a scientific fact that women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear. They like it when they have to reach out to you more. I didn't make them that way. That's it's just the way you guys are. It's 50-50. When I'm doing phone sessions with guys, and I was like, okay, what percentage are you contacting her first versus her contacting you first? And they go, well, it's about 50-50. I always say to them, I was like, I, when I hear that, I know at some point you got friend zone. And they laugh and they go, well, I'm going to get to that. And it's too much. It, they become like roommates. Happens in gay relationships, happens in lesbian relationships, and obviously heterosexual relationships. The feminine person, the feminine essence should be doing most, if not all, of the pursuing. When you're in a relationship, it doesn't start that way in the beginning. In the beginning, the guy starts the ball rolling. He gets her number. He asks her out on a date. And if he just calls and takes her out once per week and things are good, typically by a second or third date, she's going to sleep with him. That's just typically what happens. And then after that, you start getting phone calls or texts or funny memes or different things coming through messaging apps. And then you use those as opportunities to get together again. And as the weeks go by, what happens is you start out just seeing each other once a week. And then by week six, week seven, if you follow what's in the book, typically she's going to be in love and want to know where this is going and bring up the relationship topic. And then it's her idea. It's not like in the movies where you got to lock her down or else some dude's going to steal her. You do that and you're going to get, I'm not ready for a relationship. I'm not able to be at this place in my life. You'll get excuses instead of her being excited to lock you down. <clears throat> and what's interesting is in the old movies, when you go back to black and white movies 50, 60, 70 years ago, that's the way it always was. The women were always trying to get the best, most eligible bachelors to marry them and live happily ever after and have babies. Oh, like in, remember I made um, Erica watch Gone with the Wind? And we, she was talking about um, Ashley. Well, he was not available, but he was the most eligible bachelor. But he married his cousin, his second cousin. So he was no longer available. But she still, like, yearned for him. 
and turned down everybody else pretty much. She wasn't like emotionally there because she, her heart was already with someone else. It was sad. Yeah, but here's the thing. The same guys that would, in a way, prefer if the girl texts them first are also the same guys that if we do text first or if we do communicate with them throughout the day, they always take it as us being clingy. Yeah, so that makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, so it's not that the girl is being clingy. It's just that when, because if you reach out to your, in your case, you reach out to your boyfriend, you're like, hey, babe, how's your day going? I'm thinking about you. And he's like, you're so needy. You're so clean. It's like, that's not what you want to hear. You want to be, hey, babe, I love seeing your name light up in my phone. I love when you send me those little voice messages randomly. It always brightens my day. You want to be excited to hear from her and you should never take her for granted because if you respond that way, then yeah, she can call or text your ass anymore. You can't be a dick about it. It's being sweet. And so when she does reach out, you're like, yes, I'm so glad to hear from you, sweetheart. And then she's going to keep doing it. But if you're like, ah, you're needy and you're an ass to her, then she's not going to want to be around you or talk to you. And then she's going to call and text you less and be less available. And then she's going to find someone else. But there are girls that are needy, and it's they're not reaching out because they just want to say hi. They're reaching out because they're worried he doesn't like me anymore. Is he dating somebody else? Did he meet somebody else? That is annoying and obnoxious. And then you should have a conversation with her. You say, babe, I love hearing from you. But there are times when you reach out to me, it's not because you miss me and you want to say hi. You're worried that I'm doing something that I shouldn't be or that – the girls that I work with are hitting on me or that I'm going to happy hour with them or I'm going out with my single friends and one of my single friends just sleeps with everybody and you're worried that I'm going to be like him because he's one of my friends. You know, those instances, yeah, it is annoying. That is needy and that is her issue she needs to deal with, especially if she's constantly thinking that you're doing something wrong. So when she reaches out, you should be excited because feminine energy grows through praise. So whatever you praise your girl that she does that you like, she's going to do more of it. And if you praise her for reaching out, she'll reach out and she'll be even sweeter and she'll put more thought into it. And if you're a dick to her, then she's going to back off. So you can't be a dick to your girl. Yeah, I feel like you be definitely... Nice. Be kind, dangerous, but kind. I feel like you you can know like if someone is crazy or actually like needy. But if this is our way of saying, hey, like you're not you don't you're not texting often or whatever like we are trying to communicate in a way like we're trying to communicate that you know this is something that you should you know improve on you know again it's not us being needy like you would know if someone's being very like you know if someone's not giving you your space you would definitely know but it just like I said it really doesn't make sense and like Corey said like don't be an ass about it yeah, sometimes um, I like to talk. So usually when I text my boyfriend. No way. <laughs> so he's like, honey, he's like, honey, I'm working. I love you, but I can't answer you right now. And my phone keeps going off in my pocket and it's aggravating. That's me. awesome. So, mm-hmm. Please. Perfect. Good so job, please. Pete. Simple communication. Yeah. It really goes a long way. Yeah. So. And a lot of people don't, like, I feel that a lot of people underestimate the power of communication. Something so simple Yet people complicate it for absolutely no reason. So if you tell her, hey, like, I'm stuck at work or, hey, like, I'm going to go out with my friends. Trust me, we'll be we'll be at ease. We will definitely be at ease. Depends on what friends you're going with. <laughs> <laughs> are these, I mean, are these the troublemaker friends or which ones are these? <laughs> are these the single friends? No. The single girlfriends with the high body count. They're always going home with a different dude every weekend. Yeah, no. I used to like um, call like because I would didn't know these friends because some of you know everybody has a couple friends that are get a little too crazy. Mm-hmm. So my boyfriend, I had to tell him like, I'm not worried that you're you know hanging out with them. I'm not jealous. I just want you to be okay, you know. So and then also I'm like, you gotta take the dogs out. <laughs> But if it's like, you know, two in the morning, I'm like, okay, come on, bring it back this way. Come back home. Reel it back in, babe. Reel, Reel it, back it back in. in. Frank the tank. Bring it home. Bring yeah. it home. Frank the tank. But I mean, sometimes it's- Last call. Yeah. It's, Time to come home, babe. 
when some that's a part of like my insecurities. Got needs. So I, need I mean, for seeing too before I go to sleep time. Anyway, oh beauty gosh. rush. But, but anyway, so sometimes that's I mean that's how I feel about it anyways. It's not really necessarily insecurity. You're just looking out for them because you care. Yeah. You know. But so, sometimes I feel like in the back of my brain, I'm like, eh, there's always, you know, but more or the well, less. Always voices going on. In yeah. There. It, it <laughs> happens. <laughs> it happens. They're sweet. Not like the, the sweet one. It definitely happens. And I get Jade on that. But once you, voices in my once head. you show us otherwise, you know, that kind of stuff, we get over it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you definitely we do, do get over it. I'm not worried unless over they it. give me a reason to be worried. Exactly. And if they give me a reason to be worried, then the clock's ticking for them. Exactly. Yeah. And it's just a matter of time before I'm like, peace. Like, literally show peace, us, bro. like, show us that we have absolutely nothing to worry about and trust me we will not be on your ass about things constantly like but if don't there's something take... to be worried about then you should his be time is literally yeah. like yeah. the bomb that's going to be bye no yeah. exactly i'm going to literally drop him you don't want to no, stay exactly. stressed about that person. i don't need yeah. it i don't need it making your health and if he's gonna be fucking around let him go do that to somebody else not to me again as women we're telling you all this don't think we're like crazy mfs or something because oh, no, we're we are. actually communicating to you so don't tell us well we're all three of us are communicating to you that we're clingy or we're needy we yeah. are actually telling you and communicating to you guys Unless you're like a day trader yeah. and you're busy trading all day um i don't want to hear that you're so fucking busy and you can't like have my text message like popping up and it's stressing you out um hey, if i'm in a meeting if you're in a meeting nope. that like if unless I'm a client nope Exactly. Like, un unless you're really that busy and like you're, but you a have that high, conversation. I paid whore. <laughs> like, oh I really, gosh. I, I don't, I don't want to hear an excuse. Like, it's okay to like, honey, I'm busy. I'll talk to you in like an hour. I'll see you at yeah. happy hour. I'll see you at dinner. I'll see you in the bubble bath. Whatever it is, I'll I'll see you later. I'll talk you to you in like an hour. In the bubble bath, baby. The bath will be drawn for you at your perfect temperature. I want a bath bomb. I yeah. want a cherry bath bomb ready. <laughs> Me and P have never taken a bath together. How? Oh, my goodness. Never taken a bath? Actually, no. We did it on my birthday this past year. Good. For the first time. But it's did you use Mr. Bubbles? I think we used some soap. It was at the hotel. But they made their own bubbles. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> um... But he, I always like the water really hot. That's why we rarely ever take. That's this. like a, I don't know what's with you guys, man. I've got I've got burned. He's like it's like burned showers. my skin off. I love it. I, I have it all the way the on hot. The, the hottest like, it can go. And then I'm still trying to turn the knob to see it if it can go, go anymore. anymore. <laughs> yeah, like trying to break it. Like. Yeah, taking showers with your girl can really suck. It's the best. <laughs> yeah, it's the best. Don't complain. I'm always Get on the my hunt skin for a scalded. I'm always on the hunt for a bathtub because I used to have one in my house, but then my parents decided to make it like a spa shower. I'm like, bro, now I'm like, every time I go on a trip, I'm like, I hope there's a bathtub in the hotel. Mm -hmm. Our bathtub is use. like huge. It's like can fit two people like side by side. Mm -hmm. I mean, not like not yeah. like me and Pete because he's he's huge. Yeah, but uh, you don't take up much room. So yeah, I don't take up much room, but he does. So, but it's like me and Little you can sit no. side by side in his bathtub. It's huge. 